Uh, I want to talk about, if we can, three th different topics. One, the actual science of global warming, which is the cold science part. Uh, two, the political discussions around all of that, which is the hot talk part. And then th third, we'll talk about what we should be doing regarding the politics, the energy, and the planet. So let's start with the science. What is it actually telling us about the climate? Well, the interesting thing is we, we are told that the world's coming to an end, that everything's getting worse, more floods, more droughts, more hurricanes, and so forth. And when you start to look at the record, you start to see that there's a lot of fluctuations, but there really isn't any long-term trend. I mean, hurricanes aren't getting more intense. They're not making landfall more often. They're not becoming more frequent. Uh, but we go through cycles. We go through periods where there's a lot more and there's a lot less. Uh, for example, in northern Delaware, we are seeing more floods and droughts. It has nothing to do with climate change. It has everything to do with land use change. In particular, the fact that uh, over the last 80 years, northern Delaware has gone from being very rural to very urban. We now have urban street flooding, which re leads to flooding of the rivers and streams. We have a lot more people demanding the water. So when we get low on water resources, we hit a drought much more frequently. So we are seeing more floods and droughts, it has nothing to do with climate change. And in fact, most of the variables we look at, we're not seeing any major change connected to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide seems to be only a minor player in climate change. You know, that's interesting because what you just said is that there is a man-made impact on the local climate, uh, land use, but in terms of the broader picture, Mother Earth, so to speak, it has not, felt the same kind of impact from human activity. Right, and we talk about the urban heat island effect, the fact that cities are warmer than the surrounding countryside. It used to be just before 1940 or so, just after, when we had planes, we decided that instead of taking observations downtown, we would move them outside to the airports and things like that, for example. Well, if you look at Dulles Airport in DC, I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere back in the 1940s. Now it is in the middle of an urban sprawl. The temperature at Dulles has gone up, again, not because of climate change, but because of local land use change surrounding the airport. So the global apocalyptic vision that everybody's telling us, the science is 100% settled, it, it does not seem to be backed by the solid scientific research that you're doing. It's not backed by the observations. What is backed by are the models which in, in simply put, the models overstate the case because one, they, uh, they are tuned to give a much greater signal to a carbon dioxide change in temperature, for example, than we actually see in the real world. And the second reason is they tend to use a carbon dioxide model that says that you know, coal, for example, is going to increase about five times between now and um, 2100. And nobody believes that coal use is going that way. So there are ridiculously extreme scenarios of where we project the carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere to be. And that's why the models tend to give you extreme values that really can't be trusted. You know, when I was in science class in elementary school and, and junior high and high school, the whole idea of carbon dioxide, it was something that I was putting out because I breathed out carbon dioxide and plants were taking in and, and doing all sorts of wonderful things for me, cleaning the air and, and at the same time providing food and shelter and, and so forth. But now carbon dioxide is like this poison, this evil enemy of all life in existence. Yeah, what is the real truth? What is the carbon dioxide footprint looking like around the world and, and what is the impact it's having? Carbon dioxide is plant food. I mean, plants grow better under more carbon dioxide. In fact, commercial greenhouses often pump carbon dioxide in to increase it two, three, four times the ambient levels because plants grow faster. And in particular, what we're finding is that not only do plants grow faster, they are more water efficient under higher carbon dioxide because the stomates don't have to open as wide so they don't let out as much water vapor. One of the things we're seeing in satellites is that there's a general greening of the planet, except in places where we've had urbanization taking place and in places where we've had large scale deforestation, most of the planet is showing a greening and that's due to increased carbon dioxide. 